Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lefty from 643 Productions welcoming you to another gameplay commentary doing that brand new thing. I'm up here in the corner. The gameplay is down there. As always, be sure to remember to leave a rating. It just takes a second. Remember, likes, favorites, comments, and shares via Facebook and Twitter do help me out. And I want to talk to you guys about something uh, that is... Uh, I think newsworthy. I don't. I don't know if it'll get a lot of play. Honestly, I don't know if it'll get a lot of play in this community. Uh, but Alex Hutchinson, the creative director of Assassin's Creed Three, the creative director. He's the he's the guy when it comes to Ubisoft's next title and much anticipated title. This is the guy, and he is accused in an interview. And in a piece on Games Industry International, uh, I will link it down in the description if you want to go check it out for yourself. He has accused gaming journalists of harboring, or at least partaking, in subtle racism with respect to video game titles released by Japanese developers. And here's a quote from the article. Quote, this is Alex Hutchinson once again. Quote, just think about how many Japanese games are released where their stories are literally gibberish. There's no way you could write it with a straight face. And the journalists say, oh, it's brilliant. Then Gears of War comes out, and apparently it's the worst written narrative in a game ever. I'll take Gears of War over Bayonetta any time. And he continues on talking about just kind of substantiating uh, his claims of, of subtle, his subtle racism. Now, I don't necessarily agree with Hutchinson about the racism issue. I mean... I'll, I'll say it like this, and I know people are going to misinterpret it, and they're just going to be stupid and dumb because they don't understand, but they're going to talk like they do understand. And it's very, very easy to be prejudiced and racist. It is. Anything you do, anything you do and anything you say can be interpreted and twisted as being prejudicial. And keep in mind, racism is just a sublet of prejudice. It's kind of the same thing. It's just kind of a na more narrow view. It has to do with somebody's nationality. Uh, I guess race, or not racism, but religion kind of plays into it. Some people say yes, some people say no. But anyway, it's very, it's very easy to be prejudicial. And thusly, it's, a, it's easy to kind of fit people into a racist mold. My point is this, is that prejudice, prejudice and racism, it's a nebulous topic. Right, and it's nebulous because it's it's not necessarily clearly defined, and because it's so easy to twist something someone says or does into being prejudicial and or racist. So that's why I I just kind of like yeah okay you want to put the racist label on it Hutchinson fine whatever I but I don't necessarily agree. What I will agree with is that gaming journalists in this industry definitely do exhibit not necessarily favoritism, but they are more lenient with Japanese developers than they are non-Japanese developers. Think about it like this. I'll put it to you like this is the perfect example. Activision. Activ well, now Activision Blizzard. But Activision is the most, one of the most, next to EA, they, they kind of battle for it. It's like Pluto battling for being a planet and not. It's like EA and Activision going at it uh, for, <laughs> for being the, the most asshole-ish in the, in the industry. But Activision is one of the most vilified corporations in the gaming industry for everything they do, for, for creating, just puking out iteration after iteration of the same title. They did it with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. They did it with uh, Guitar Hero. They're trying to do it with Call of Duty. Just to, money, 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 title, title. They know this name, know this name, know this name. Bam, 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 stamp, stamp, stamp. Not uh, creating innovation, not striving for innovation within the genre or within whatever genre uh, or, or title uh, their, their series is, is in. They're just, bam, get it done, get it out, start cashing checks. And they do that, and they're vilified for it correctly, which I'm not trying to say that those things are, in fact, cool or good for us in terms of the consumers wanting the best gaming product possible. It's, I, I still think they should be vilified for doing what they do, or at least to the extent that they do it. However, how many times has Nintendo released a Mario title? How many times has Nintendo tried to tell the story of Mario or Zelda across how many platforms have they tried to do this? Yet, each time, 
the Ocarina of Time or some variation of that theme is put out by Nintendo, it's not review. It is not. It is not viewed in that context. It is not viewed through the lens of oh, they are trying to they are trying to run this series into the ground, or this is the series we've seen over and over and over and over again for the last half decade. No, it's taken as it is, and it is reviewed as a game. Whereas a lot of other titles that are doing the same kinds of things as as Nintendo. Again, Nintendo uh, and other Japanese developers. It's not just the the iterating title after title after title. It's not that, or the iteration of a title after title after title. It's not just that. There are other things, you know, poor storytelling, uh, bad innovation, nonsensical mechanics or or non needed mechanics, clunky controls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I have seen as as a regular consumer of gaming journalism, journalists look favorably or at least give a pass to. Japanese developers and the titles from those Japanese developers and absolutely vilify and destroy non-Japanese developers for doing the same. And I, again, I'm not saying it's wrong because I think it's racist. I'm saying it's wrong because it's not consistent. Because these, these people want to label themselves as journalists. They want to play the journalism game. And I say, okay, if you want to play the journalism game, you're going to have to be consistent and unbiased. Everybody, a lot of people hate ESPN. Why? Because they're not journalists. They want to pretend like they're journalists, but they're just East Coast sports fanboys that have a nation, ne- nationwide network. They have a national network. But they just they 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 are fanboying a few different teams and Tim Tebow and the the Cowboys and the, just there's a they pick and choose. They say we love this, love this, love this. We're just going to cover the shit out of it, and we're journalists. No, you're not journalists. You're just a you're just a fanboy network. That is what I see happening from time to time in the gaming journalism world. There are fanboys of Nintendo that try to label themselves that that try to hide under the guise of being journalists, and you're not. So if you want to be a journalist, if you want to be a gaming journalist, you have to you have to adhere to the rules of all journalists. You have to be consistent and unbiased. If you are going to decry Activision for what it does, you have to decry Nintendo for doing the exact same thing. Just because you like Zelda, just because you like Mario, doesn't mean Nintendo can get away with it and Activision can't. Just keep that in mind. But anyway, guys, that's my time. I got to get out of here. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to drop a like on this video. If you did enjoy, remember likes, favorites, comments, and shares via Facebook and Twitter. Do help me out. I'm out.